Hey Bears, Eric here. We're going to react to a video sent to me by The Critical Drinker titled The Boys Season 4, How to Destroy Your Audience. So strap in. I've already pitched up the speed. Let's see what he has to say and debunk any of the dumb stuff that comes out of his mouth, which is probably going to be a lot. Here we go. One of the questions that comes up pretty regularly on Open Bar these days is, Drinker, you tough-talking, charismatic gunslinger with a dark past, when are you going to review The Boys Season 4? Ah, uh, The Boys. Now that's a name I've not heard in a long time. You know, I used to be a real fan of that show, to the point where I actually gave the first season a Drinker Recommends Award. And truly, what higher accolade can one bestow upon a work of art these days? Anyway, at a time when the superhero genre... There's a lot of fluff leading into this. This is sort of him trying to legitimize whatever he's going to talk about in this video. You'll see this very often with channels like this. Uh, when they're going to talk badly about something or diminish something, they want to set you up to lean in to what they're saying. And they legitimize that by creating this idea that they used to love something and now they no longer love it. Uh, whether it's true or not, who knows, but the reality is it is used commonly to sort of get people in the mood to listen to what they're going to say next. ...was already becoming kind of stale and played out. The boys came along to completely tear up the rule book. Funny, violent, irreverent, and wickedly subversive, with a complex and well-written cast of heroes and villains, plus a whole lot of other characters in between, and a story that brutally skewered everything from fake corporate activism to our obsession with celebrity culture, media manipulation, and cultural warfare. It was really everything you could look for in a show like this. I kind of checked out after season three, partly because I was pretty burned out with superhero stories in general. Did I hear that right? I had to run it back there for a second. You checked out. You kind of checked out after season three. So you mean to tell me that you're not watching season four at all? You haven't seen any of it. And you're going to do some sort of analysis on how the show is destroying its audience when you're not engaging with the content. I've already gone through this with Melanie Mack, but it looks like now it's becoming a trend. We're seeing it here with Critical Drinker, where they're not engaging with the stuff that they're criticizing anymore. At this point, they don't have to. They no longer have to. The writing's on the wall. They're seeing that the people that are watching their content are not going to require them to even watch the stuff before they criticize it. Furthermore, the season's not even done. We're not even done with the season yet. It's, it's quite interesting. Let's continue hero stories in general, even shows that subverted the genre, and partly because I could see the way the boys was heading as a creative property. The complex, nuanced, and multifaceted characters were slowly morphing into simplified parodies of themselves. The central storyline was becoming trite and predictable, and the bitingly witty satire was becoming more overt and partisan with every season. Parody so this is kind of a... This is a discussion that's happening online right now. Like, how much of the boys is still satirical? How much of it is more referential? How much of it is just a copy paste of what's going on in the real world? And when it comes to that stuff, it's totally subjective on what you're willing to put up with. It really is. Some of the people like the earlier seasons, and this is going to be sort of like a running theme with most shows. The earlier the seasons are, are typically the seasons that people love the most. The longer a show goes on, the more you can nitpick it because they have created their own world, their own lore. So there are things that may not line up correctly between seasons or character motivations or things like that. It's a pretty common thing. The longer a show goes on, and this is why TV reviewing is very different from movie reviewing. The longer a show goes on, you have to start reviewing it slightly, like, like through a different lens as it progresses. Um, you see shows like Supernatural that went on for like 15 seasons, whatever it was. And the show, every five seasons or so, the show would do a soft sort of reboot to what it was and change up the vibe of it. Some fans stuck around for that. Some left. They gained some new fans. It's That's just the, the way it works. Um, we're seeing it happen at a more, like a hyper rate with streaming shows because of the rate of release and the amount of episodes they get in the same predictable talking points as every other Hollywood product. Basically, the boys just wasn't cool or interesting anymore. It wasn't fighting the power. It was the power. It wasn't raging against the machine. It was part of it. What was one No, no, that's not it. Um, the issue there is that a lot of people misunderstood the show in the earlier seasons. People like yourself who thought that the show was not picking a side, right? The show was not 
saying, putting their foot in the sand or planting their flag on any particular thing. You misunderstood that. Homelander was never a relatable character. The, the awful people in on the boys were never supposed to be relatable characters. They were never supposed to be characters that anybody said, yeah, that side is the side that is supposed to be the good side. It, that was never the issue. The issue now is they are so blatantly obvious about it because of how long the show has gone on, four seasons. It is so blatantly obvious. And now people behind the production of the show who are tired of a lot of the guys who get on social media, perpetually online people, trying to use this the series as a wedge issue. They're tired of it. And I have to give them credit for actually saying something because the reality is a lot of times when people make media and, and it gets used as a wedge issue or it gets just like, oh, well, House of the Dragons, the stories, rings of power, blah, blah, blah. These, these stupid, like, uh, I, I call it like sports analogies of media, of art. Um, they don't say anything. They sit back. Either they're told by the studios they can't say anything. They're, they're PR people, whatever. With the boys, they're saying stuff. They're coming out. They're saying it. They're being like, you guys are idiots. Um, the show has always been about this. Our characters were always this way. And it was very obvious from the beginning. Once rebellious, subversive, and irreverent had become just another mouthpiece for the safe, corporatized, hollow, and performative activism that it once so brutally mocked. So I wasn't exactly brimming with excitement at the prospect of sacrificing another eight hours of my increasingly limited lifespan for the new season. Frankly, I've got better things to do with my time. Okay, so that's it. In, right? Right, that's it. You, you have literally, in, in two minutes, you have explained why you personally are no longer watching the boys. Whether I agree with your takes on that, whether I think any of that is accurate, regardless of that, you have explained in two minutes why you are no longer watching the show. Case closed. Book closed. Move on. But you realize that just like with Star Wars and everything else that you guys complain about, is they are vastly popular. This season is doing better than last season. Vastly popular shows. And this idea that they are objectively bad, this concept that you guys sort of have indoctrinated your audience with, that falls flat on its face when you have to continuously talk about something that you say no one cares about. If you are fans of Critical Drinker, Nerdrotic, any of these channels, you have to understand, take your brain out of the fucking toilet for a second. If no one cares about something, how would they be able to have the massive platforms they have? How would they be able to do that? Woke stuff, Disney, Pixar. How would they have platforms if they were talking about stuff that nobody liked? That is just completely false. It's, it's a false narrative that, that you guys keep buying into for some reason. And I don't understand why. <laughs> But hey, maybe they managed to turn things around. I mean, Stranger Things was drinking at the Last Chance Saloon for me after a disastrously bad season three, only for the showrunners to listen to fan complaints and come back with an absolute banger of season three. How do you know that? Citation. Can you show me somewhere, a, a article, interview, something where the showrunner said they specifically changed the show because of fan complaints? Show me that information. You can flash it up on screen. You don't even have to read it. Just... Take a screenshot of it and put it up on your screen because otherwise you are speculating. You're speculating that that's why they changed it, but you don't know for sure. But if that's going to be part of the, and, and people get mad when I say this, when I go citation, the reason why I do that is because this is a cornerstone to the point he is making. His argument is, or his point is that the, the showrunners, the people, the creative team behind Stranger Things changed it because of fan backlash. There's no proof of that provided in his video. So at that very point, that argument falls flat because he's not providing proof of that. That is how I function. That is the way I view these things. If you're going to say statements like that, you have to provide some sort of proof that those things are real. Four, maybe we'd actually get something similar here. So it was off to Rotten Tomatoes for me to check out the reviews. Not the critic reviews, of course, because nobody in their right mind gives a shit what those fucking shills have got to say about anything anymore. Your channel is called... The critical drinker. You are a critic. So you are calling yourself a shill with a broad brush. All right. Interesting. Or I'm talking about the audience reviews, which is the only semi-reliable barometer for quality these days. And it's not. 
and I, I'm, I'm going to totally destroy this argument here in a second. Oh, oh. Okay, so let's get into this. This means nothing. It means nothing. And let me explain why it means nothing. This score is not going to make you change your opinion on whether you like or dislike something. And it's not going to make me change my opinion on why I like or dislike something. Doesn't matter what the critic score is. Doesn't matter what the aggregated fan score is. None of that matters. That's number one. So all of these sites being used as a metric for quality is irrelevant because everybody's personal opinion about something is going to be different. At least I, I suspect it's going to be different. It should be. You shouldn't be liking stuff just because it's good or bad on Rotten Tomatoes. That's really fucking stupid. All right. Secondly, these sites can be manipulated. If you're going to suggest that critics are unreliable because they're shills, because they're paid, whatever the reason is, then you have to also accept that the fan score can be manipulated. The fan score can be manipulated just like the critic score can. And it can happen on all of them because none of them, none of them are foolproof. So anytime these channels use Rotten Tomatoes or any site for any reason whatsoever to explain their argument, they have already lost the argument. This should never be used as a tool to prove anything about any show or movie, ever. And I will say this again, these guys do this because it helps them paint their narrative. This is a big red flag. When you see channels using Rotten Tomatoes, IMDb, any of these things, their scores, as part of their information to badmouth a movie or a TV show, they have already lost the argument. I mean, the audience scores have been gradually declining from an all-time high of 90% in season one to 75% by season three, but that's kind of in line with most shows, to be fair. But there's no denying that season four absolutely fell off a cliff. Good lord, I don't think I've seen a fan base turn so hard on any show since Game but the viewership percentage is up. The score doesn't mean anything. You need to look at stuff like percentages of people watching, things like that. The score that you show on screen from any of these sites doesn't mean anything. It doesn't prove anything. Game of Thrones. Look through the reviews and you'll see page after page of absolutely brutal write-ups, all saying basically the same thing. The general... All saying the same thing. Hmm, I wonder why that is. I wonder why all of the reviews would almost be a copy paste of the same thing. What does that? What does that? I don't know. Maybe botting. Maybe people running bots to downvote stuff would say the same thing in every comment. Consensus is that the show seems to have sacrificed writing quality and smart characterization in favor of simplistic shock value and cheap political point scoring. And the show has always been about shock value. It's always been about that. From the very first season. Very, like media literacy from people is paramount here. The show has always been about shock value. In short, the writers have become more interested in getting their own personal ideology across and owning the chuds rather than actually telling a good story. And well, Here we go. The idea that those two things can't exist together. You can't possibly tell a good story if you're talking about your own personal opinion. <laughs> you can't do that. That's impossible. That's bullshit. You know it. Critical Drinker knows it. Well, that sort of strategy never really pays off. Naturally, I was curious to get the other side of the story, so I took a look at a recent interview with showrunner Eric Kripke in The Hollywood Reporter, and he had this to say about accusations that the show had become too partisan. I clearly have a perspective, and I'm not shy about putting that perspective in the show. Anyone who wants to call the show woke or whatever, that's okay. Go watch something else. But I'm certainly not going to pull any punches or apologize for what we're doing. Some people who watch it think Homelander is the hero. What do you say to that? The show's many things. Subtle isn't one of them. So if that's the message you're getting from it, I just throw up my hands based you know why do i feel like this is based it's his show rapidly becoming a tale as old as time a show gets popular and goes mainstream the writers get a little too overconfident and think they can use it as a platform for their own personal hang-ups the fans start to push back against them and instead of taking that criticism on board and responding in a constructive manner they just say fuck it go watch something else you well what is be what is constructive here Let's just, let's break down what you've talked about in these four minutes and 30 seconds, because people love to look at you as some sort of beacon of positive criticism, even though you said critics are shills, which you're a critic. 
It's literally in your fucking name. The, the, the feedback that you're giving is we don't want it to be X, Y, Z. Things that it has been since the very beginning. But because it's gone on for four seasons now, you feel like it's become very wearing on people and that nobody wants to watch it anymore because it's all overdone. At the very beginning, you said that you, you tapped out just because of the genre and the type of content this is. So what you want them to change the whole show to something else? That's the criticism. You don't want it to be satire anymore. You don't want it to be about superheroes. You don't want it to be violent. You do, Like, you tapped out in season three. And, and you're basically saying you want a different show altogether. Also, you act as if the show got more popular over time. That's what you were just saying now, that, that the show goes on for so long, they eventually get so popular, that blah, 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 goes mainstream. You said earlier the show was at its height in season one, and then the the fan reception of the show died down as the show went on. So please explain to me how the show got more popular over time, according to your statements. How did it get more popular if the fan reception went down? Please explain that. I would love to understand how that works. Dicks. Fen reminds me of this idiot who did her level best to tank the American comic book industry and then had the balls to berate her own customers for not loving what she was doing. And if you don't like my politics, don't buy my book. I was being told. Let you girls enjoy yourself. It's the entertainment equivalent of that asshole kid who takes his ball and flounces off home because everyone else won't play the game the way he wants them to. It's this weird narcissistic sense of entitlement amongst creatives these days. That Those two words, entitlement, narcissism, they can be applied right back at the fan base. You are not entitled to anything. You are not entitled to anything. And these writers, directors, producers, anybody in the art world who is making art does not have to buy into the narcissistic belief that you should get what you want. Those two concepts do not have to apply to art. If I'm making an album of music as an artist, I do not have to make music that everybody else wants. Maybe I just want to make the art that I want to make. Maybe I'm in a position where I know I have two more albums left and that's it. I'm done. I'm wrapping it up after that. Two more albums left and I just want to make the stuff that I want to make. You, as a fan of that, you're not entitled to anything. That everyone should just unconditionally support and agree with you because you're such a paragon of wisdom that there's no... No, that's not what they're saying. They actively said, if you don't like this, you don't have to engage with it. Let's, ru let's run that back. That's not, that is not what they said. Let's, let's go on here. Just won't play the game the way he wants them to. It's this weird narcissistic sense of entitlement amongst creatives these days that everyone should just unconditionally support and agree with you because you're such a paragon of wisdom that there's... No, that's not what they said. They actively said, if you do not agree with me, do not engage with my content. Unless you're reading something into that that they didn't say, that was not the statement that either the clip you showed and the interview that you that you talked about with Eric Kripke, neither one of those things said that. They didn't say that. That's a straw man. There's no possibility you could ever be wrong about anything. The problem, Eric, is that other people don't always think exactly the same way we do. They don't always share our beliefs parrot our opinions, mirror our viewpoints on every topic. And that's okay because people are allowed to have different points of view. And nowhere did he say you didn't. Another straw man argument. Nowhere in that quote did he say that my point of view is the right point of view and you're not allowed to have another one. No one said that. This is, this is what really pisses me off about these guys. They're creating this environment for themselves. They're making targets of themselves. That's it. I don't care if you believe the same thing that I believe. I don't care about any of that. But when I'm making a TV show or a movie, maybe I want to make that from a specific point of view that doesn't line up with your point of view. And that's okay. That should be allowed. Not everything has to appeal to every single facet of society. Not every show that comes out is going to appeal to every single person. Not every movie that comes out is going to appeal to every single person. That's the beauty of art. Art is subjective. And people are going to look at it differently depending on what it is and who that person is. You want people creating art to treat it like McDonald's or Burger King. Have it your way. Whatever people order when they come through the drive-thru is how art should be made. Art by committee is shit. Art by committee is going to be shit. Creators should always have a part of themselves in the stories they're telling. 
When you are an artist, you should always have that in something you're telling. I don't want Walmart TV shows. I don't want Burger King TV shows. I don't want this these TV shows to be made fan fiction. I don't want fans writing the media that I am consuming. I could very easily look at something and go, I don't like that. I can go watch something else. I can move on to something else. You're certainly entitled to say you don't like it. But this idea that a creator creating something is narcissistic because they are creating it the way they want, that's fucking bullshit. You know that's bullshit. And all the people that follow you know that's bullshit. All of this is bullshit. A smart, humble, and creative writer finds ways to bridge the gap between all these different groups through the unifying concept of good storytelling. No. No! That is not... You cannot make media that is going to appeal to everyone. It is impossible. You cannot make everyone happy. Saying that a smart writer could do that is disingenuous. And it's fucking stupid. How many movies are written out there with certain demographics in mind? There's a lot of them. There's a lot of movies that do that. And if you transcend that, great, fantastic. You broke down the barrier. But that's not the way everything should be written. That doesn't make you a smart writer. And a bad writer, on the other hand, tries to hammer home his opinions on his audience with sheer brute force and then gets angry no. and resentful when they push back against it. I'll no, no, no. What's the criteria on that? What's the criteria on that? Would it like if somebody made a conservative movie, like a movie about like conservative ideology? Would you be saying the same thing? No, you absolutely would not. You are mad because these these people making these products are not necessarily catering and pandering to you anymore. And so now you're telling all the people that watch your media and your content, they should be mad about this too. You should be mad about this because you're no longer the center of the universe. And these they're attacking you, the fans. No, if you're not if you don't enjoy something and you're not watching it anymore, you're not a fan of it. It's really that simple. I'll let you decide which one you used to be and which one you are now. Also, it's interesting watching the discourse around the boys on social media, which I can best summarize as, the boys used to be smart and fun, now it's all about pushing politics and nothing. You don't know that because you didn't watch it. Okay? This bullshit thing that you guys do where you're like, oh, I'm just going to read articles about it and watch people talk about it on social media. And that's enough for me to make up my mind about this whole thing and make a whole video about how this destroyed the audiences using a bunch of straw man arguments and shit like that. It's really fucked up because when I talk about Melanie Mack doing this, Melanie Mack is not a legitimate critic. She's not. She's just some person online with a camera talking about stuff and even though it makes me mad she does not label herself as an actual critic like that's not something that she is labeled as you on the other hand are considered a legitimate critic by so many people it's actually in the name of your fucking channel so you should be ashamed of yourself absolutely fucking ashamed if you had any ethics in your body at all that you're making a video talking about the quality of something that you did not watch, basing it on internet discourse. This is probably the scummiest thing you've done in a long time. I don't agree with a lot of your takes, clearly, and I think you do grift quite a bit, but your audience actually looks to you and expects you to give them honest criticism about stuff. There's nothing honest about this. You're not watching it. You're literally reading articles and reading the internet discourse around it. That is not a proper way to give a review on something or talk about the quality of something. But yeah, here you are talking about personal biases and ideology when that's the entire way you're framing this. You're basing your opinions on all of this stuff on your own personal bias on how things should be written how writers should do things, how directors should do things, how people creating media should do things. All of that is arguing from your own personal bias, Critical Drinker. All of it. Nothing else. <laughs> Cry harder, chuds. Don't you know this show was always making fun of people like you? Sheer fucking hubris. <sighs> Okay, let's get this over with. Yes, people with functioning brain cells knew exactly what this show was and where its political sympathies lay. Nobody in their right mind looked at Homelander as a misunderstood hero that represented the voice of the mass. False. False. A lot of people online have posted about how they agree with Homelander. They have Homelander as their favorite character because they, they believe in this guy. They believe in it. That is an actual thing. And to say that you've been keeping up with the internet and you've been reading what people are saying and then act like you've not seen people say that is a fucking lie. It's disingenuous. Either you're lying that you 
that you personally have been keeping up with all of this on social media, or you're lying about the fact that you haven't seen this uh, when it comes to Homelander. Both, it's, it's one or the other. It's one or the other. And this is what I love to do when I'm watching videos from you guys. You, you have a situation where you put yourself in a box where either choice means that you've lied about something else. So you've lied about one thing or another to get to where you are. You have to decide which lie that is. Sees. Nobody looked at Stormfront and thought, you know what? She's got a point there. Nobody clapped and cheered when the Deep forced himself on Starlight and it's complete gaslighting to suggest otherwise. The show was never particularly subtle about its politics or what it expected its audience to take from it. The difference though is that for the first couple of seasons at least, it was actually fun and entertaining because the creative focus was still on the story and character. So you're... So what was the first part of this video about then, Critical Drinker? What was the first part of this video about? Was it subtle or was it not subtle? You acted like it was so well done in the earlier seasons because it wasn't really picking a side, but now you're saying that it did pick a side. And you're just mad that the actual creator has come out and stated now what that side was. Because people who are not quite as smart as you did not get that in the beginning. But now you're saying you did get it. So he wasn't lying about it. He's always been putting his political ideology, his social ideology in the show since the beginning, according to you right now. So it's always been there. The difference is modern politics has become more and more absurd. So the boys is no longer predicting. They're no longer trying to figure out what the next crazy thing is. The crazy stuff is ramping up. It's getting worse and worse and worse, due in part to a lot of the people like yourself and other channels that push this culture war stuff to absurd levels. But they're looking at this absurdity and they're like, we can't make it any crazier than it already is because it is beyond wild at this point. So the show is no longer predicting and projecting how things will be. They're chasing behind the absurdity of everything else, which is probably why the show is going to end next season because they are getting to a point where there's not a lot of material left to do the satire the way they used to do it. That would require you though, to do a little self-reflection and understand that what you're doing and what a lot of the channels like yours are doing online is contributing to the decline of actual good media. And believe it or not, people can be surprisingly receptive to your political ideas when they're smartly presented and wrapped up inside an entertaining product. People can empathize with characters that involve- mm, Let's run that back. Let's run that back because I have something to say about that. Listen to this. This is kind of a, a, he's kind of telling on himself here. Check this out. Characters. And believe it or not, people can be surprisingly receptive to your political ideas when they're smartly presented and wrapped up inside an entertaining product. Hmm. Would you say that your channel and a lot of channels like yours do that? They package up politics and social commentary in a very professional way that makes it easy for people to become, I don't know, malleable to it. I would say that's a pretty accurate statement. That's a pretty accurate statement. A lot of the people that become more radical, that become more wrapped up in these things and are less likely to question stuff do so because they get this constant sort of onslaught of media from these kinds of channels that's wrapped up in a nice, neat little package. You're going to listen to what they have to say because it seems like it's legitimate. And uh, that was a very interesting tell. People can empathize with characters that embody ideas they don't normally support as long as those characters are well-written and likable. People are even capable of laughing at themselves when you point out the more absurd or extreme elements of their worldview, provided you do it in a way that's actually funny and insightful. In each Subjective. That's all subjective. These are not objective comments. Talking about how something is written, especially when you're talking about the character's personalities, motivations, things like that, those are not objective things. They're subjective things, which is fine. He can present it that way. There's nothing, there's no issue with that, but that isn't some definitive thing. Like he's not telling you anything that you don't already know. These are things that everyone should be aware of when they're engaging with media, whether you've gone to school for writing or not. Of these cases, though, the primary focus should always be on entertaining your audience instead of lecturing or pandering to them. And I think that um I feel like I'm repeating myself here. The all of these things pander in some way or another. They're either pandering to men, they're pandering to people who are more conservative, they're pandering to people who like to see sexy women, they're pandering to people that like 
music soundtracks. They're pandering to people that like flashy lights, people like superheroes. Everything panders. It, it all does. All entertainment panders. To say otherwise means you either don't understand entertainment or you're lying to the people that you're making content for. This is where the boys has finally come unstuck. I mean, the issue is here that Critical Drinker is pandering. He's pandering to you guys right now. The more strident and blatant your messaging becomes, the less entertained people are going to be, and the more of your audience you end up pushing away. Instead of uniting them with entertainment, you end up... I want to reiterate here, he hasn't watched this season, so he doesn't know anything about that, and the show's viewership is actually up this season. So, again, if, if you ever want to, like... If you want to understand why this is so frustrating for me and a lot of people is if you want to argue about your opinion on something, like if he wanted to make a video talking about how he felt about the boys and he just wanted to talk about his subjective opinion about it, I don't think most people would have an issue with that. The problem is he frames things in a way that makes it seem like it's objective. When he talks about how things should be written, how things should be directed, how art should be done by committee, all of these things, how fans should drive the narrative. All of these are things that he tries to push as objective things in his videos. And you should, at the very least, engage in the content you're going to criticize. I think that's a big red flag. And I'm going to fucking call that out every time. I'm going to call that out every time. If you're going to review something and talk about the quality of something, you have to engage in it. It is paramount that we hold that standard for everybody, regardless if you're a supporter of their channel or not up dividing and alienating them with politics and well i hope it was all worth it eric i hope it was worth tanking your franchise tarnishing your legacy and turning your own customers against you oh it doesn't matter it's not like the show's gonna get canceled right it's it, first of all it's doing better now than it did last season so there wouldn't be any reason for that plus he's locked in for another season so it's not like any of that matters he's at the point and everybody else on the cast is at the point where it's like if you don't like what we're fucking doing we're not gonna kiss your ass and act as if we have to give you everything you want. And if this show were speaking more of your language, you would say it's based that they were doing that. You would say it's based that they're not bending the knee to the woke mob. That's how you would frame it. If people in my space were saying the show wasn't diverse enough and we were screaming that we want more diversity in the show and the showrunners came out and said, we're not going to do that. Right. We're not going to make, we're not going to put more diversity in the show. If you want more diversity, don't watch our show. If that was their response, you would say that that's based and it's good because it's fighting back against the woke mob. It's not bending the knee to the SJWs. That's how you would frame this. It's all about narrative. It's all about narrative. For the sake of some cheap political theater that's going to be forgotten as soon as your show's over. I hope all those pats on the back that you and your fellow writers have given yourselves make you feel better when the show inevitably gets canceled. I know, I don't think I will be watching season four. It won't be canceled. It's getting one more. They've already announced next season as the final season. It's too popular. It's not going to get canceled. This is what I'm talking about. This is what I'm talking about. If you're going to make videos like this, with a title like this, at least understand what the fuck you're talking about. Four of the boys after all. Quite frankly, I've got better things to do, and I suspect you do as well. Any so we're going to end it there, but this is a very, I don't want to say dangerous, because I feel like that's, it's taking it to a level that it's not. It's very bad, because you have someone like Critical Drinker, one of the largest channels in the Chud space, right? who is not has not watched the season is taking second third hand information to make this video that's first and foremost frames art if it's not done by committee and the fans aren't the number one focus of what you're doing every single time you put pen to paper there's something wrong with that and then at the very end at the very end he says i'm not going to waste my time watching it and you shouldn't either he is telling you, or the people that watch him, I guess, to not watch or support the show based on something that he isn't watching. His recommendation is to not support the show because other people have told him that the show is bad. This is shit criticism. This is shit journalism. It All of it is shit. You can be mad at me all you want for calling him out. You can even disagree with my takes in this video. But something I will not back down on, and I think this is something that everybody should stand behind, and you need to start demanding this of these channels. If you are going to tell me 
why something is shit. If you're going to criticize something, then you need to take the hit and watch it and then tell me what you thought of it, critical drinker, what you thought of the boys. The season's not even done. But you need to engage in it. You need to watch it. So you are providing me with a good, I hate to say this, a good faith criticism of why the media is bad, at the very least. If you start letting them do this, and I'm speaking to fans of the Critical Drinker, Nerd Roddick, Melanie Mack, all of these guys, if you start letting them tell you that something is bad when they're no longer engaging in it, you have no leg to stand on. None at all. And if that's the path you want to go down, then so be it. But I refuse to be quiet about this. This is bullshit.